Jonathan Barkan with Dredge Central, and I'm here with John Schnitzer, the director of Haunters, The Art of the Scare, and also essentially a professor of immersive horror. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for giving me a professorship without having, I don't have to even pay for going to school for that. This, is, awesome. this is like uh, those honorary professor professorships that are given to people like Barack Obama and people like that. We just don't have you in the full outfit. We don't have the diploma. Oh, yeah, but I, you know, I, it's, I'm getting lumped in with professors and presidents. I'm feeling pretty important right this now. This is pretty great. You're so this. this South by is going really well for you. It's going good for me now. Yeah, well, talk more about it. how is the South by treating you? It's going really great. I've been having so many great meetings because Haunters is on Netflix. Yep. It's doing great on Netflix, and it's doing so well that it's actually, it was in theaters before Netflix. It was in a bunch of Alamo Draft House theaters, mm -hmm. and now it's coming back to theaters. That's uh, a rare accolade. I was so surprised when I got a phone call from um, the Alamo Draft House in Denver, mm -hmm. and they said, March 19th, we want your movie. I was like, what do you mean? It's, you know, it's on Netflix. They go, we've been getting a lot of demand for your movie to come back. Well, seeing something like that on the big screen is radically different than seeing it inside of a home, especially when a lot of people don't have you know, a sound system. They may have a sound bar or the t sound is coming out of the TV, but seeing it in the theaters... That's an experience. Oh, it's like pulling the pin on an emotional grenade. It's so yeah. much fun because there's people who are laughing, there's people who are screaming, there's people who are arguing with the screen. When it's over, the best part is the conversations, the debates, the arguments that people get into when it's finished. And really, when you, when you create something that puts you through a roller coaster of emotions like I wanted to, when you make them laugh, when you get emotional, when you get angry and you get shocked, and you feel strangely inspired, when you put all that together, it's, it becomes a more memorable experience because y you might not always remember the things that you thought were really nice in life, yeah. but you remember a great debate you remember a great. You remember a fight you got in, and what you should have said, or what you heard. Oh, you always do that in the you shower. Always remember. Oh yeah. man, I was like, oh, I'm I'm the best after arguer <laughs> ever. Afterwards, I'm like, oh, oh, um, in the shower. Oh yeah. man, that would have been. I should have said this. I had the best comeback later. Yeah. And what's fun about that movie is, people who don't even care about Halloween or haunted houses at all. They then get into a whole debate about it, and then they start going well. These extreme haunts are so crazy, but these traditional ones or that immersive theater one, mm -hmm. I like that one. Or maybe black out something for me because there's a safe word. Yeah. And next thing you know, I was getting so, I've been getting a ton of messages from people who can't stand haunts, went to their first haunt after watching the movie, which I'm so proud of. And, I think it's, and what were their reactions? They're loving it, right? They, they have to be. Of course hooked. they are. Of course they are because, look, it's, it's interactive, immersive theater. Yeah. You know, at a haunt at its best is can be one of the most creative, immersive events ever. And the fact that there are now s as many sub-genres of haunt as there are of horror, everything from supernatural to torture porn and every single thing in between, that means there's something for everybody. If someone's yeah. into solving a puzzle, they got escape rooms, or they've got Murder Co. coming out. Mm -hmm. You know about Murder Co.? Yeah, we just got oh, a God. story about it. so excited about what John Cook from Not Scary Farm is doing, because... Number one, he's doing some of my favorite haunts of all time at Not Scary Farm. You know, the dark ride is so great. What, what a great idea, the dark. You, did you do the dark ride? I have not. I've actually never been to Not Scary You've Farm. You've never been to Not Scary I've Farm? I've never been. It's on the list. It's something that oh I have to God. do. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You have to. I, mean, I have to. I mean, look, that's where it all started. But he, he came up with this thing called the dark ride where you're actually, it's a broken down theme park ride. Okay. And you're walking through it. And there's even, like, animatronics that are, and they're all breaking down. It, oh, it is the God. And the lights are coming down. He's, he's just a master. And he gave me a tour of what Murder Co. is. You mm -hmm. know, the first rated R escape room of all time. And the fact that it's so interactive, the fact that if you solve it, you get a reward that's really intense and crazy. Mm -hmm. And if you fail, then there's a really scary punishment. Okay. You know what? I'm, I'm tired of escape rooms that are like like serial killer escape rooms that you're yeah. and it's really fun and really great. And then at the very end, there's no killer. They're just like people are like, oh, you did a great job, guys. I'm like, what happened? Yeah. Where's the killer? It's like I'm coming to get you, and this whole countdown is coming, and you're getting all built up, and there's nothing. And what he's doing is the fact that he teamed up with Immortal Mass. Also, mm -hmm. I just love it. I love what he's doing. It's a, it. There's there's innovators like that. There's like John Braver with Delusion. 
you know, the interactive haunted house play. Where yeah. you get to play a part. Have you done that one? I've not. You've never done Can it? I, you understand that I live in Ann Arbor, Michigan. I live so far away from all of these amazing opportunities that I just... I can't do it. Oh my we, God! You have to schlep out. This, I have I'm to telling do it, you right yeah. now because delusion. What makes delusion so special is that not only is it interactive theater, but you're going to experience something different than what I'm going to experience. Yeah. You know, I wanted to put that in my film to show what the future of haunting can be, because to me, the future of haunting is more immersive and more interactive and more personalized. You know, when I went through that um, delusion, th th like the scenario that's in my movie, I went down the hallway to the bathroom to go ask for a key. The door slammed shut behind me. I heard my friend scream and run away. And then all of a sudden, someone put a knife to my throat. I got kidnapped. There's a whole storyline that went on. My friends had to kick down the door and save me. When the whole hunt was over, it's not even a hunt. It's like an interactive it's theater. It's an experience. It's an experience, right? Yeah. When it was over, we all got together and they said, I said, what happened when the door slammed shut? They said, there was someone on the ceiling that dropped down and chased after us. I'm like, oh my God. And then while we started sharing our stories about what happened to us, it felt like when you're a kid telling a scary story, only it's not a scary made up story. It's yeah. something that just happened to you. You're fleshing out almost a movie, a yes. full experience. And it becomes really scary and all of a yeah. sudden I'm getting chills and the hairs on the back of my neck are yeah. standing up because we're talking about it mm -hmm. and it made it more real and then you leave having a story to share having an experience that you had and you leave knowing something learning something about yourself too. and there's really something fun. so entertaining about being with your friends and someone asking like well how was it and you all start chiming in but you won't believe this happened and then this and then remember what happened to you and then you're all telling it and that person sitting there bombarded with joy and excitement yeah. and terror and they're sitting there going i want that yeah i want a piece of that oh totally and sometimes the best way to show these things off it's not always by saying, this is so great, let me show why it's so great, because usually you hear, this is so great, it's like, I'm not into it. But when you use the darkness to expose the light in something, then people really feel it on an emotional, visceral way, and they get yeah. to connect to it more, and they go, that's, that's why I like this, or that's why I like that, that's why I want to try this. You know, and that, that's, to me, that's what, what, what it's all about, because I want people to get off the couch and go experience something. Yeah, and we've, you know, you've mentioned that immersive horror is really evolving and there are amazing things that are happening within that world. Where do you see it going? What are the possibilities? Is this something it's endless. where it's, it's is it endless. endless? It is endless. It's, you know, I, I get so inspired every time I see a new attraction take it to another level, like Alone. It's that existential haunting. Mm -hmm. Alone I've done it three different years, and every time, it's totally different. One time, it was all across the city, and it was just in the public, and different things were happening all over the place. One time, it was that I went into a building, mm -hmm. and it was like you're on this bizarre job interview, <laughs> and it got crazier and creepier and creepier. It felt like a David Lynch movie. Okay. That one felt a lot like a David Lynch movie. And what Alone does is they're doing something scary with empathy. You leave completely messed up. Your clothes are gonna be ruined, your hair's gonna be messed up. But when you leave, you feel so amazing because there's an undertone of empathy throughout it that's really special. I, I, I'm a very empathetic person, so that sounds like something that I would both love and also it would really have a long-lasting impact. You feel amazing afterwards. I mean, the thing is this, there are a lot of, there, there's a lot of different experiences, but they're not all working off the same set of rules. That's why it's kind of the wild west of haunting right now. Mm -hmm. People are doing really crazy stuff, and you have other people saying, that's not a haunt, but this is a haunt. That elitist attitude that kind of needs to step to the side, because it's something that they're all trying to do the same thing by offering us an experience. They're all trying to offer an experience, but they're not all trying to do the same thing. Okay. The, the question is, what does the experience want you to leave feeling? It's like a horror yeah. film. Some horror films, it's all about dread. Some, you get to feel good afterwards. Some you're laughing the whole time. That's right. I mean, yeah. so it's like, what's the tone? So when these new attractions are coming out, the important thing is to think about is the tone that they want to do, 
and then how they want them to leave. If, if it's an attraction that wants people to leave empowered and feel good, I think all attractions should do that. Because when you get to face your fears and confront them, yeah. you know, it's a, I, I filmed a scare study okay. in a, at, a, at an extreme haunt. The only scare study put on an extreme haunt. And they were scanning people's you know, um, brainwaves their, their brain waves yeah. before and after doing an extreme haunt. And the results come out in about four months. Okay. I filmed the study. And it's so exciting. I'm actually going to be giving a talk here. Uh, the Immersive Horror Experiences panel. Yes. And I'll yep. be talking a little bit about that study because they came up with things that were so interesting, but I'll, t- I'll give you a little uh, taste a of little it. A little taste of it, okay. This is a Dread Central exclusive. Something that was really interesting was that they tested this on couples. Okay. And what they would do is they'd have couples holding hands and not holding hands, and they were, me- they were measuring it uh, d- during that time period. And here's what they found. If you're in a good relationship and you go through an extreme haunt, it will bring you closer together if you are in a bad relationship you might break up there (laughs) and a lot of people broke up there on the spot you didn't protect me you didn't stand up for me and think about an extreme haunts when they're done right they should test you but they should always give you the option to get out to have a safe word so you can stop it you know when you feel in control then you feel empowered and if you use the safe word, a lot of people get a surge of relief when they get to say the safe word. Mm-hmm. They don't feel embarrassed. They don't feel sad. They actually feel amazing. It's like, wow, I know my limits now. Yeah. Or next time I'll see if I can get even further and, and, and see what else I can see. I mean, the 17th door is doing something really clever. 17th door is letting you say the safe word and skip that room and go to the next one. Because maybe cockroaches are just never going to be your thing. Yeah. <laughs> but the next thing will. And the 17th door... It's a nice marriage of extreme and interactive and virtual reality. This last year, they, they combined all those things. And that's where it seems like the world is going to be all the more exciting because even here at South By, there are so many booths that are uh, showing off their virtual reality yes. technology. You've yeah. got the Ready Player One VR Lounge. You've got YouTube offering it. You've got it all throughout the convention center. So how can VR and immersive horror experiences come together to create something really amazing? Well, the thing about virtual reality that's so cool is virtual reality, when it's in 3D, mm-hmm. it penetrates your visual cortex in a way where it actually creates a memory. So it's been used for exposure therapy right now, mm-hmm. where you can actually, if you're afraid of spiders, you can actually see the spider, you can touch the spider, and you can get over it. There's a great Japanese study that was done. Oh, my God. It was so incredible. They did a, a height study. They had people, like, um, you can find this on YouTube. I'm telling you right now, this is one of the funniest videos ever. They have, like, a balancing beam, okay. and at the end they had, like, a stuffed animal of a cat. You're not. You saw this. And what they did is you, you put on the virtual reality headset, and you're at the top of a construction site. I think I have seen this, yeah. And you're crawling to get to the cat, and people are screaming and freaking out because it's so real. I did a simulation of that. The bottom of my feet just sweat immediately. I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God. Even though though you know know, I have so much floor around me. It doesn't matter. Your brain connects the dots, and it makes it feel real. That's why exposure therapy in person can take a long time for for you to come over your fears, get, get over your fears. But in virtual reality, you can overcome your fears a lot faster. Actually, it's being used um, in war zones with soldiers to help them overcome their PTSD. Um, The the VA has been using it. Um, Absolutely amazing how they're recreating some of the simulations of what they went through. But how it's being used to scare in an interesting way, 17th Door, um, this year they did something that I I screamed my head off. It was so scary. (laughs) You got into a metal chair. They strapped you in. And they put, they put the whole headset on you. And then the virtual reality started. And you see like a cop in riot gear saying, welcome to your virtual reality experience. And he has like a cattle prod and he zaps your arm and you get a shock in your arm. And I was like, oh my God. And he's like, oh no, what did I sign up for? <laughs> and then boom, you're on a ride and it's moving. It's moving and you're seeing things happen to people. And then when they happen to you, mm-hmm. you feel it too. They're doing that in, in different haunts in Japan right now where they are strapping you to a gurney, you got the VR set on, zombies are coming after you, and you feel them touching you. Okay, sometimes you don't need to go that far. Yeah, you know, sure. I, I did a virtual reality project this year called Flatline Experience. Mm-hmm. I created it, um, and I'm so proud of it. It's actually produced by Portal Experiences, The Brain Factory, and 3D Live. 
years ago I met someone that had a near-death experience and I thought that'd be an amazing virtual reality experience because you can't just film someone talking about a near-death experience without other people kind of folding their arms going, yeah, right. Sure. But if you use virtual reality the way horror can be used to create empathy, mm -hmm. when you can create empathy and put someone in that point of view and show it from their point of view, we put you in the hospital bed and we, it's a true story. We found out the bed, the blankets they were using. We found out what light it was. We, found, we talked to the light company, mm -hmm. wanted them to turn on the lights. So we could record the sound of it. It's, this is the room. Yeah. It's real. And then when the spiraling vortex comes in and pulls you down and you feel your stomach drop while you're spiraling down and you are confronted with claustrophobia, it's closing in on you, it's getting more and more and more intense until there is this incredible climax where at the end you feel so connected to everything. It's such an amazing experience that you can actually give somebody some like um, emotional visceral and almost a spiritual feeling using technology and yeah. we can we can do that we can actually make your worst fears come true but do it in a way where when it's finished you feel amazing you feel euphoric you know that's the, that's the idea that's the goal that is the goal i mean look look what look what get out was able to accomplish get out was able to have a conversation about race that in a drama people would just like i don't want to see it you know what it sucks nowadays. There's a lot of bad news all the time. I don't need to see a movie that's going to get me mad. But if they can make you laugh and make you scream, and when the movie was over, I went by myself, I talked to everyone in my row. And we all went out for drinks afterwards. Mm -hmm. And we had such a great conversation. Horror has always been able to do that. You yeah. use that mirror to society to reflect.